Okay, hi. So today is what will be the start of a vloggy type video um, for the Read What You Own challenge. So this challenge has been set this year again by Ollie at Criminali. The point of this is to read books you own before you buy more books. So it's a book ban with like a scheduled period of time. There are a few other people who are, um, I guess, uh, helping spread the word about this lovely event. Uh, so I saw it on Greg's channel at another Bibliophile Reads. And I really don't like book bans because I hate telling myself I can't do a thing. Um, but I've been doing this thing this year where I'm mood reading and I'm really not really setting limits on my reading or my buying. And what's ended up happening is I'm reading a ton of library books, which is great. I love supporting the library, um, but it also means I'm not reading many of the books I physically own. So this started on November 6th and I'm like trying to figure out the way to make this most attainable to myself. So it is currently a Tuesday night. I have taken the rest of the week off of work because I have a bunch of PTO I have to burn and I'm going to read. That's that's the plan. I don't really have too much else going on. I have some things I want to get done around the house that would require me to listen to audiobooks as I go. And I would like to get some physical reading done because I have a lot of books that I don't have access to audiobooks for and they, they might not exist. I don't know. Um, how am I going to participate? I think I'm going to go with the lowest tier which is 25 books. This is really stretching it. Like, I guess I want to be done with the challenge by Christmas because I want to be able to buy books around the holiday. I, I get the week of the holidays between Christmas and New Year's off. So I'm taking two weeks off straight. I like to be able to go book shopping um, in that time and, you know, do my thing. These are the books I've already finished in November. So I finished... Jade City, The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, and Ruin. Books that I have on my physical shelves that I'm confident I will have finished by my cutoff date by like Christmas is Wrath by John Gwynn. So that'll finish out the series. I'm actually already reading it. I'm farther along in this than that. I'm reading the audio or I'm listening to it on audio. The Sunlit Man. Uh, the Last of the Secret Projects by Brandon Sanderson. And I'm pretty confident I'll get through Jade War. I'm in the midst of it right now. I'm reading it with my partner. Um, we're probably going to lose the audiobook, but Spotify now has audiobooks on it. And we have Spotify Premium, so we might be able to listen on that. But like, allegedly, you only get 10 hours of listening time. I don't know. That brings me up to six books. Now these six books are thick. Like these are the ones I've read. These are the ones I'm planning to read. So I'm reading really big books, but I obviously have to supplement this with some small ones. So let's chat through the small ones. I have a lot of tiny books on my shelf. I really like novellas. I haven't read a lot of them this year, but to count for this, because I'm trying to read as many as I can. So maybe I'll back up. What are my goals for the next three days? There's a good chance I'll finish Wrath. I'm like in the midst of it. Shit is happening and I, it's an audiobook, So I probably will finish this over the course of the next few days. Now let's grab little books under 200 pages and we'll kind of see what we do with those. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna start with an easy win. It is 50 pages and it's a play. So we're going with Freedom is my middle name. I finished this. This is a one act play. It looks like the runtime is about an hour um, if you were to watch the production. And it's like a when it was first done, it was a touring play. So there's like five different cast members, maybe six and they play different people. So it starts out in the high school in what was present day, I believe that's the 90s. And uh, it's a group of kids who have some sort of detention and uh, three of them are black and two of them are white. And they have to talk about like a, um, they're, they're assigned a, an assignment over their weekend that's like look into the history of an unknown 
a black hero. And then they're like talking about how this is so dumb and whatever, and they don't want to do it. And then uh, one of the people that they were learning about in class becomes personified and like takes them back in time to different events where people who were nobodies um, did something impactful and it kind of comes full circle. I feel like this is a play that you'd probably see in like a high school production. It'd be put on for high school students and high school students would watch it and feel kind of embarrassed by it. It had good themes on like who is a hero and that type of thing. So yeah, overall it was like, a, it was a fine play to read, uh, very short. So now that I'm done with this, that's four books, so four of my 25, so we're making progress. I'm probably gonna switch to my audiobook and kind of uh, do some chores around the house because I've let it go into like, I mean, entropy has taken over, let's just say. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to get some stuff done. So I failed at my task completely. I kind of cleaned up, um, but Mara at Books Like Whoa was live doing like a, a voting of the Goodreads and like she's planning on reading all 20 of the thriller mystery nominations. So I watched her and Jess for an hour. And then I listened to Bookshop, Bone, Bone Dust and Bookshops, Bookshops and Bone Dust, the new Travis Baldry. I don't own that. I just, I just didn't do anything that I intended to do. So hopefully Wednesday through Friday goes better, but um, this will be my last check-in for Tuesday. So it's now Wednesday morning. Um, some shenanigans are going on outside. I don't really know what's happening. I didn't mention it, but I am uh, home alone for the next few days. My partner never travels for work. He works from home and he's at a training. Um, so it is me by myself with my cat. Um, she usually has his lap all day, but he's not here. So she has my lap. Um, and we're going to find out how needy she actually is. So, um, I'm stuck here until she determines I'm allowed to move, which means I'm probably going to listen to my audiobook. But I think my goal for today is two books. Okay, some time has passed. Um, I have listened to... Hmm, almost 75 pages of my book so got like that chunk done I'm currently like this far in so that looks like about a third of the way into the book i am going to pick up my first short one i'm picking up love this one is translated from the norwegian and it takes place over the course of a single day so i always like to read those books in as close to one sitting as possible so we'll see how it goes so i finished love it was all right. It takes place in Norway. It's in the winter and it takes place over the course of one evening. And it's a boy who's about to turn nine and his mom and they don't really interact much. And it's kind of them interacting with like the world around them and people around them. And it jumps very quickly between the, the two of them. Like two paragraphs will be from one perspective and then two paragraphs will be from another. So it kind of makes you like work for it a little bit, keeping pace with like who is doing what where. It didn't really do anything astounding, but one off the list. So now we're at three, five, five red, five of 25. Probably now gonna switch to audio. I have some errands that I wanna take care of. And uh, yeah, then I'll, then I'll check in later and see what my second book of the day is going to be. Okay, so got through about 44 more pages of this book. So we are maybe like 35, 40% into it at this point. Um, I think that the next book I'm gonna pick up tonight uh, is Assembly. So I'll check in when I'm done with that. I don't really have too much going on tonight. 
I did all my errands outside the house and like I have things I can do around here. I have projects I could work on. Um, but I'm not really like feeling it. So we'll see what I actually get done. Okay, so I just finished assembly. You can see my <laughs> my light that I used to read with. So this book, you followed this black woman who has found success in finance and in London, Britain, somewhere. Um, she's probably in her late 20s, early 30s. And it's not really about what happens. It's much more of her internal thoughts and her reflections on encounters not really as much about the things as they're happening but you get snippets of what's happening in the present and then a lot of her introspection this is much more about like the themes um of the book as opposed to like characters or plot or anything like that and it touches on a lot of them it's you know the th themes around race um being a black woman in a in a male dominated white dominated industry the impacts of the past um how you can't escape colonialism um and imperialism because it still exists on to this day generational wealth in its accord with that and it's told in like short vignettes I wasn't a huge fan of the writing style. It, it was hard to kind of sink into for me because it bounced around all over the place. I kind of had to always be on my toes with what was going on. Not my favorite. Like, I do like thematic heavy content, but um, you never really felt a large connection to anything that was going on because you weren't kind of feeling things in the here and now. Um, but there was a quote I really liked. It was, how do we examine the legacy of colonization when the basic facts of its construction are disputed in the minds of its beneficiaries? Uh, I thought that was a very succinct and nice way to say that. And yeah, so it is, what time is it? 8.30. I'm uh, probably going to just listen to my audiobook, but that is, so this is six. morning. Good morning. <laughs> I see. You want to get in my lap? There you go. All right. Look at life go by. <laughs> that is a loud purr, baby. Um, good morning. It's Thursday. Oh my god. <laughs> she uh, never came to bed last night, and as I said, my partner's not here, so she's feeling extra desperate for attention right now. Um, it's like... 8.45, I'm, I know, I know, I, um, I don't think I'm gonna pick up a book in the early morning, I, I mean, I'll listen to my audiobook, I won't pick up a physical book, I, um, am getting a facial, which I've never done before, so it's like, I have no idea how that will go, but I'm doing that in a few hours, um, so until then, I'm just going to drink my coffee, probably have some breakfast, 
maybe listen to my audiobook if I'm up to it and just kind of chill out. So, good start to the day. Where are you going? It's honestly like her world and I'm just living in it. <laughs> oh yeah, where do you think you're going? So it's a rather nice day out for this time of year. It's noon-ish and I haven't done any reading today and I'm trying to think of like what I'm trying to accomplish with the day and I think I'm trying to read one book and then like start a short story collection. So I have a few short story collections to choose from that kind of fit the short vibe that I'm going for. Um, I've attempted this one before and didn't, it was just not working at the time. I, I don't think the writing is going to work for me right now. I'm looking for stories that are like a little more straightforward right now and aren't like trying to do too much with like the writing style. And I also want stories that are a little bit shorter so I can kind of pop them in here and there, but they don't have to be like vignette style. So I'm probably going to end up with either The Curious Case of Dasu Keen's Trousers, How to Pronounce Knife, or Moccasin Square Garden. And then I kind of want a more straightforward book. Um, I would like it to be a little bit more character driven than the other ones because I've just kind of felt like I'm at arm's length in both of the other ones I've read, which um, I'm, I'm just not really in the mood for. I was looking for like first person narratives to see if that'll like pull you in a little bit closer. So I have The Desert and the Drum, The Spectre of Alexander Wolfe, which I've actually attempted before, The Bleeding of the Stone, Omnivores, which I've also attempted before, and Kitchen. So um, it's also a nice day and I have some things I need to get done. I think you've probably seen me go outside with my cat already. Um, I have to clean up some leaves, though I'm not doing the traditional deal where you get rid of your leaves. Leaves are a good place for uh, critters to live over the winter, um, also in your dead things in your yard. So um, I am going to be doing cl like cleanups of my yard in springtime rather than in fall. Um, I'm also attempting to kill my grass in different areas. I have a lot of grass. 
Um, I don't like grass. It's a uh, kind of a wasteland uh, for life, unless you have leaves on it. And it's, yeah, it's just not my vibe. So um, I would, I'm attempting to uh, nature scape my yard. It's like a, <laughs> I have like a five year kind of plan for it. Um, I actually did successfully kill some of my grass in some areas. Some of my grass has also been taken over by moss, which is quite nice. So I, I'm starting to get moss in a lot of areas, kind of I'm starting to get moss in a lot of areas, kind of infiltrating my grass. Um, and I'm cool with that too. So yeah, but I do need to get the leaves off of my pavement. Okay, so I'm currently in my backyard. Um, I have a hill behind me, it's kind of covered in grass. I started trying to get leaves away from my house um, so it's not on the foundation and I was just gonna lay them around the lawn. But I've now realized I have a lot more moss in my backyard than I did this time last year, um, which is awesome. And I was looking it up and you don't really want a lot of leaf matter on your moss because it can kill it. So I'm now gonna have to take care of my leaves, but um, the concept of putting them into bags and having someone take them away and them take up landfill space is absolute nonsense to me. So I have a mulcher and I think I'm gonna mulch my leaves. Uh, buying store-bought mulch, uh, it can be how you end up with a lot of invasive species in your yard because you have no idea what's in the mulch when you get it. I actually was uncovering the leaf area and found uh, an invasive vine species that I thought I had contended with, but it's back. So let me show you my moss. All right, so the people that lived here before us have rubber. <laughs> <laughs> they used rubber mulch. It's absolutely atrocious. Um, but here you see, I have a ton of moss in here. There's different varieties of it. Um, so you can see in here, and then we got some darker ones throughout here. It kind of goes across this whole little area, like right there. And then more in here. And you can see where I didn't get my leaf litter last year. Um, because I was recovering from surgery. It's completely killed everything in here. So I'm not gonna touch that because it's super wet, um, but that will be something I have to contend with next year. I'm, there was grass under here, so I'm hoping I can, you know, remove it and like the moss will start to migrate over. This area of my property is at the bottom of a hill gets wet. So having moss here to absorb things is great, but my cat, is um, chilling and is blending in with the leaves. So I'll start to get my leaf blow, my leaf mulcher out, but it'll scare her. And this is probably one of the last few days she'll have outside with me. So we'll let her um, enjoy the time outdoors because she runs the place. But these are the leaves I'm gonna mulch. I have a ton up here. Probably gonna get them off the stairs, put them to the sides, but I'm not gonna do anything with those. And then I have leaves that I'm scattering throughout my lawn that I'm um, not really intending to keep forever. So I'm probably going to end up listening to my audiobook for a lot of the day. It's currently 1.40. So I have uh, like two good hours of daylight and then like two and a half good hours of daylight um, before I have to call it and go in. So it is 6.45 in the evening. I um, finished my chores around four outside. Okay, I read about 80 pages or listened to about 80 pages worth of wrath. So I am past the 50% point. So that is exciting. And then I did pick up a book earlier. I am reading The Desert and the Drum. The book itself is 170 pages and I'm on page 55. So um, I could still finish this tonight. I haven't picked up any of the short story collections, but I did kind of want to make scones. Um, I bought all the stuff to do it. And so I think I am going to do that, but um, I'm probably not going to listen to any books while I 
do this. I'm probably going to watch something else or put on put on something else that doesn't really require much of my attention. Hopefully the scones are a success and I'll probably check in a little later. So the scones, successful. Um, they're great. I made masala, like garam masala scones. And then I have um, an Ethiopian butter that I made for a recipe. Um, it's like a spiced butter. And I put that on top. Also very good. I consider this whole mission a success. The reading mission, it's not the same level of success. We are 54 pages into this. It is 8.45. There is a pretty good chance I'm not gonna finish this or get to any short stories tonight, but I'll check in again. We'll see how far I get. But like everything else today was a success, but my reading less successful. I did not get through an entire book today. I am on page 137 of 170, so I'm pretty, pretty far. I have like about 40 more pages, but I will finish it tomorrow and I'll hold my thoughts till then, but I am liking it so far. It's Friday morning. I finished this, The Desert and the Drum. So this book takes place in Western Africa. It follows a young woman who is from a Bedouin tribe. So that means, like, Bedouin means, like, people of the desert. And she leaves her tribe. And she takes something that is sacred with her. And you follow her in the present time as she tries to navigate the uh urban westernized world um that she has never been a part of or belonged to and you see the events that lead up to why she leaves it's about her and like the injustice she's faced but it's also about the clash of culture the um dichotomy between um like traditional uh bedouin life and the urban centers that kind of exist and like the clash and like the collaboration as well. Of the books I've read, it's the one I've enjoyed the most. Uh, it's translated from the French. There's notes in this um, and some of them are author notes and some of them are translator notes. So I get the sense that this was translated from the French, but there were Arabic words that were left intact in the original French version that the author footnoted and described. And then there were additional translator notes of things that she felt that wouldn't translate well into English from French. So that's a really interesting kind of concept of like writing in a colonized language um or in a colonizer language with like traditional words inter inter interspersed and then uh the secondary translation of things on top of that so now that's the fourth book i've read in the past few days and i had read three before so now we're up to seven that I've read of my 25, so like, we're doing good. Today, I haven't made any definitive plans. I have a lot of things that I would want to do that would require me listening to an audiobook while I did them, so I'll probably be reading a decent amount of my audiobook or listening to it. There's little chance I'm getting that done. Um, during this reading experiment, I'm about 60% in, but it's a almost 700 page book. So <laughs> still have a few hundred pages and like, I think maybe like eight hours of the audiobook left. In theory, I would wanna get to two books today physically. In practice, probably not gonna happen. So um, I have three that I think are, I'm most likely to read uh, Banana or Kitchen and The Bleeding of the Stone. I've already talked about being on my list. They still are intriguing to me. And then The Private Life of Mrs. Sharma is the third, which I don't think I've talked about yet. So 
um, we'll kind of see where the day goes. Okay, as you can see, night has come. It's five. And uh, I've only, I, I started kitchen. I read 50 pages of it. Then I started doing things around the house. And then I started listening to my audiobook. And it's the fourth book, the final book in a series. And um, like shit is going down. Um, we are in the climax of the series, so, like, needless to say, I'm reading that, and I'm probably going to finish that tonight. We'll see if I get back to Kitchen, but I just, we're at the point of no ret return. We're at the point where you really just can't put it down, so here we are. I finished Wrath. I read a ton of it today. <laughs> I I got through like the the back half. So, uh yeah, good 40% of the book. It was really good. Um I cried multiple times. And I'm probably going to do like a guide or a review of that series um cuz I have a lot of thoughts about it and like what kind of reader um would or wouldn't like it so it's 8 30. i didn't even touch my buddy read which i really need to get to um but it doesn't count for the challenge oh yeah so then that's what am i up to eight books read so i'm like i'm doing pretty good my partner was supposed to be getting in at like 10 45 i was gonna pick him up for the airport but his flight has been delayed so he's not gonna get in until like 1 30 at the earliest um, and that's, like, not late enough for me that I could go to sleep and then get back up. But I have to start editing this vlog. And then maybe I'll read Part of Kitchen. So we'll see what I end up doing with the night. Because I also, it's Friday, so I need to get into my buddy read since we check in on Sundays. And I have a good 200 pages, approximately, of reading to do. So, Okay. So I'm going to end the vlog. I did not read any more of Kitchen, but I'm going to start prioritizing my buddy read over continuing on with this mission, which I consider successful at this point. I have read eight books, so uh, that's great. Eight of my 25. I've set myself up for success to complete this by uh, Christmas, I think, as long as I keep some momentum in it. Uh, but that is all I've got, so until next time, happy reading!